Hello everyone and welcome to Shelved episode 10. We did it. We made it to the double digits. I am so excited. This is an amazing episode. It's my favorite episode so far. Because for one, if Hollywood has proved anything, it's that our nostalgia makes so much money for whoever's cashing in on that. And this is one I am very excited for because once this movie the first trailer dropped. I was always interested in the idea of them doing a new Power Rangers movie that isn't like super kid-like because I saw that original Power Rangers movie in theaters and at the time I loved it. But it's one you go back now and it's it's really cheesy. It's it's definitely for kids. And this one looks to be balancing the line of like, yeah, kids can enjoy this, but adults can enjoy this too. And I'm super, for some reason, I am super excited for this movie and uh, hopefully I will be seeing it the weekend that this comes out. Uh, I've already kind of made plans, but we'll see if they fall through or not. But yeah, this week we are discussing Power Rangers, and I sat down with my buddy Alberto, um, you know him as Scrump on Twitter, and we just dissected our childhood as we just ripped apart this Power Ranger script. Not ripped apart in a bad way. We just we really dove into this one. It's the longest episode yet, and it's I had a lot of fun discussing it. It was the one I was looking to... <laughs> Sorry, it was the one I was most looking forward to discussing, and I think it really came out. It, it exceeded my expectations for the episode. And for everybody listening, I just want to let everyone know that there is a special offer attached to this episode. For the first five people who review the show on iTunes, in an honest review, I'm not saying five stars, but hey, five stars would be great. For the first five people who review the show on iTunes, uh, you can take a screenshot or a picture or some kind of proof. And if the first five people who email it to the show at shelved film podcast at gmail.com, you will win a free bullet club shirt from pro wrestling tees. So if you're a wrestling fan or if you just want a free fucking badass shirt, review the show on iTunes, send me the proof, send it to the email, send it to Twitter. I prefer the email cause then I'm going to have to get your shipping information. Um, then you'll win a free bullet club shirt and that's pretty fucking awesome because those are really expensive shirts and a chance to get one for free is totally worth it so yeah be sure to review the show the first five will get the free shirt just send you have to send in the proof that's the only requirement it's pretty easy to do you can review it on your phone just look for it in the store and slide over to reviews and you, it'll allow you to write a review right there like everybody knows how to screenshot on their phone if not google it and then just send in that email and to that email address again is shelved film podcast at gmail.com. So yeah, definitely look out for that. Um, but yeah, so it's episode 10 and I'm really excited for this one. I really hope you guys like it. Uh, it's power Rangers by Max Landis. Hopefully you guys read the script. If you haven't read the script before going into this episode and you are even remotely interested in power Rangers, I would highly recommend Pausing this now, going and get the script. You can get it off our Tumblr, shelledfilmpodcast.tumblr.com. And you should definitely read it. It's, and it's pretty easy to find in general. Like, I found this one on Google without trying, like, at all. So, um, yeah, it's really easy to find. But I highly recommend reading because it is super interesting. And, we, you know, we try to cover everything in the episode. But there's obviously going to be little details we miss that you'll pick up in the reading. But, um, all right, I hope you guys are ready for this, and I really hope you enjoy listening to me and Alberto discuss Power Rangers. The first two podcasts I did was this and Maggie, or no, the first three. I didn't take notes for mm -hmm. the first one, and then Ziz came down and like slapped open a notebook, and uh -huh. I'm like, God, I feel like a fucking piece of shit. Like he was doing more work on the podcast than I was. So after that, I started taking notes, and I'm usually reading it on my iPad, uh -huh. and I have my phone sitting in my hand, so I'm just fucking balancing back and forth. Yeah, so I figured I was like, I was like, I'll write down notes. I mean, I know most of their names, but I don't want to be like, uh. Yeah. And for me, it's like I try to do story beats because, like, when we do the podcast, I got to think there's probably people who aren't, who are listening that didn't read it. 
Uh-huh. So we might just be talking about events and they have no idea what's going on in the script. So I try to kind of move through the beats of the script a little bit. Mm-hmm. So a lot of my notes is just... Do you, like, yeah, do you have like the, the script pulled up? No, I just have notes in my phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, means, yeah. Sometimes I'll take screenshots of stuff that are like dialogue shit that I really uh-huh. like, but I don't, I don't have any for this one. But uh, the James Bond one I'm reading, I've screenshotted multiple dialogue things because it's so sexist that I have to read them <laughs> on the show. But um, no, for this one, I just I just my notes. Mm-hmm. Are we recording already? Yeah, I hit record. Oh, somebody cool. Somebody just knocked though? No, it was uh, CMT. Oh, Good okay. old cousin Mike. See, I told you somebody was going to open that fucking door. Uh, uh. Um, yeah, but um, I, I think it's pretty fucking perfect that you wore that shirt today. Yeah, of course. For it means uh, it's a podcast. It's a audio medium, so none of you yeah. guys can see. But I, I am gonna post a picture. Though. Yeah, I wore my old Power Rangers T-shirt from like 2006, 2007. It's probably. a pretty sweet T-shirt, though. Yeah, it's you can tell it's old. It's more it, the the shirt itself is a nice charcoal gray, but this thing has been washed so many times. It looks good though for as yeah. old as you say. Yeah, it is. I mean, well, because I had I had them, I had like three in rotation. They were like on, they were like <laughs> on clearance at Target, and it was one of those things where everyone is like, "You like Power Rangers? Here you go." So I had this one. I had like a baby blue one and another charcoal one. Right now, I'm that nerd where I'm like, should I print myself a Power Ranger shirt to go see that yeah, fucking I mean, movie? Listen, we were at a T-shirt shop. I print everything. Like, there's some, you know, some people I will support and buy their stuff. But for the most part, I'm just like, mm. yeah. I the only T-shirts I've bought in the last two years that I've worked here have been plain T-shirts, no design on them or anything. Because I have so many fucking graphic tees. I have multiple Punisher shirts that I've made for myself. See, I need to for a while before I started working here. I worked at Kohl's. So I needed to wear a lot of adult clothes because they look they look down on like you can't wear graphic t shirts yeah. things like that. So I was like, all right, cool, and I bought a bunch of graphic. Did, they stuff. don't really have like a dress code, right? Because the only retail I worked was Target. You had to wear a mm-hmm. red shirt and khakis. It could be any red shirt and khakis, but mm-hmm. for the most part, that's all you could wear. Coles, I just see people kind of not like dressy, but like dress casual. I yeah, guess. like they're just, you know just don't wear anything with logos. Don't. Don't come in wearing stupid wrestling t-shirts like I did constantly, you know, where they're just like, you can't wear that. And I'm just like, right. yeah, I think I'm like, stupid. all right, send me home. The best thing I had like that was I worked at, I worked at Dick's Sporting Goods and you just have to dress sporty. Like you can wear anything that they sell in the store. Like uh-huh. that was the thing. Like I think like you couldn't wear like a fucking skirt or something like that, <laughs> but you could wear any, literally any article of clothing. That you could wear fucking full hunting gear if you wanted, which everybody who worked in the gun section wore camouflage. Come on. Yeah. But, um, be more fucking, be more original. Yeah. Like I bought a pair of fucking $5 Reebok sweatpants that were on clearance my first week there. And then I wore... Wore a couple um like dry fit workout shirts basically, and that was just my uniform for that place. And I just swapped yeah. between them. Yeah, that's the thing. With, that's the thing with working here too is that people like, I'm like, yeah, I don't really have a dress code. No. Uh, yeah. I've been wearing basketball shorts every day since I started working yeah, here. Yeah, because of working here, I don't ever get to wear any of my normal people clothes because it gets, especially us working in the back of the store. You know, with all the machines running, it gets so hot that I'm just like, yeah. yeah. I, my first like week working here, I wore jeans, and that was a huge mistake. Yeah, and it, it, it's it's always great, you know, when you see someone start here and they wear jeans. Like yeah, Danny, one of the the new guys that works here, he came in wearing jeans and like a button up, and you know, it's his first day, so he didn't know better, but. uh he comes in wearing the, the next day he comes in wearing shorts and yeah. a regular t shirt. <laughs> like, that yeah, changed real quick. Because, yeah, he knew better. You know, it just gets really hot back here. Yeah, I mean, it's my first piece of advice to anybody that comes in this place. I'm like, just dress comfortably. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. It's otherwise you're going to be burning up. Yeah. yeah. Um, but all right, so that's a 20 minute. Yeah. That's a 20 minute intro. Well, well, this was telling me today that, yeah, you need more banter at the beginning of your show. So there's a little more yeah, banter. Yeah, like a lot of people are going to be like, what the fuck? What are these two fucking idiots talking yeah. about? I mean, I, f- I feel. I feel bad because I'm usually keeping people late for work. In our case, yeah. we're here late anyway. We're just yeah. kind of taking a I live a here. Break. I literally, yeah, for those who know, I literally live here uh, at the store. I, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, you, I don't care, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you you come in on the weekends now to clean the machine. So you make up, you're going to make up this time loss. Yeah. I, I just lose track of time. I don't ever know what day it is. You know, it's if I if I see that I get paid, I'm like, oh, cool. It's a Wednesday. Yeah. You know, if everyone's leaving early, I'm like, oh, cool. It's a Friday. Aside from that. Yeah. The only reason I have to keep track of my days anymore is my bills. Oh, yeah. Or like, oh, yeah, it's Wednesday. I actually get to buy food today. Yeah. Right. Wednesdays. 
yesterday was boneless Thursday at Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh, I, I didn't go. I, I mean, I was here till like midnight, and then I was like, mm, I'm not driving yeah, over there. I haven't been to Buffalo Wild Wings in a while. I live pretty close to one, too. It's pretty bad. See, where I'm at now, I'm pretty close to one. I mean, and once I, once I move, there's one around here that's close, but uh, I just... Yeah. It's not as close as the other <laughs> one. But I'll you know, I'll make I'll I'm willing to commit to making a little farther drive. Yeah. For um, yeah, for me it's like ten minutes. Um but yeah, are you ready to talk about Power Rangers? Let's talk about Power Rangers. All right. So the when I started this podcast, there was one script I knew I really wanted to do with you, and that was the Kevin Smith Superman script, because we're mm-hmm. both huge Kevin Smith fans. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, perfect. Like It was kind of like when I thought of the podcast idea. I was like, oh, well, I have this idea for a podcast, but like, who could I do it with? And then when I started collecting scripts, and I started thinking of people who would be perfect, I was like, oh, yeah, you, Vinny, and like it was great. And then the Power Rangers movie, I guess it was... When they dropped the first teaser, which really wasn't much, it might even be just when the poster came out. I was kind of like, oh, I wonder if there's a script for a Power Rangers mm-hmm. movie. And I searched for one and found one immediately. Yeah. And the writer on it was Max Landis, which is somebody that me and you have talked about quite yeah. a bit. Yeah, at length. For for those of you who aren't <clears throat> familiar with Max Landis, his father is uh, what's John Landis. John Landis yeah, of did. American Werewolf in Paris. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he John Landis himself. He's, Wait, is it American Werewolf in London? Yeah. I said Paris. That's that shitty fucking remake sequel thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Remember no. Yeah. He, yeah. His dad. His dad's that guy. He. You know. He did those movies. I think he did Animal House too. Yeah. But yeah. His, his son. What he's. What he's famous for is he did a video called Superman Lives, in which he. Well, he's, he's a famous screenwriter. Yeah. As well. He he wrote Chronicle. He's which written, is a movie I really love. Yeah. Yeah. Chronicle's real good. His initial draft. I think was like a little bit more out there than yeah, which kind of seems to be a running theme with him. Yeah. And it was a draft based on the outline by who was the director? What the fuck was that dude's name? He did the fantastic four movie. Uh, Oh my God. It's on the tip of my tongue. He did the, he did the four, the, because he directed Chronicle, and then he went on to yeah, direct he, the Fantastic Four reboot. Yeah, which which he, he was—I remember he for a while he was—they were—they wanted him to do the Star Wars Rogue One, but there was all this thing going up. Was it Rogue air. One that he was tied to? Yeah, he was tied wow. to Rogue One because he—he he basically got that from doing Monster. Or was, no, no, that was no, a different guy. That wasn't him. No, Gareth Edwards was. Yeah, was Gareth Edwards. Edwards. He did Rogue One. Yeah. Um, Josh Trank. Josh Trank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There he go. He's the one who did the. Yeah, Chronicle was his first like real movie. Yeah. He did like some short film and then Chronicle and then Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. And he has a new movie coming out. I was actually going to really? talk to you about this. Something called Fonzo. I don't know what it's about. I think it's like a movie about a person. Uh-huh. But um, I, I remember seeing the announcement for it. Like, oh, he's not in director jail because yeah. of Fantastic so Four. He, yeah, he was in movie jail. But yeah, him, he met, met Max Landis through. They went to school together. Yeah, they went to school together. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Max Landis, if you don't follow him on Twitter, or have seen videos with him. The best way to describe him is the character of Lex Luthor in Batman v Superman yeah. is literally modeled after him. The way he talks, the, the way, way he, he talks, acts. the way he looks. You yeah. know, it's it's almost all but confirmed. You know, he all but confirmed it through his Twitter. Uh, but that's essentially him. You know, he's he's a smart yeah, guy. It was Jesse he's, Eisenberg as Max Landis. Yeah, you know, he's very educated, but a lot of the stuff he does and you'll see some of it in the script, he does it just for the hell of it, you know? He's if you go on his YouTube, you know, he did a video uh Superman Lives, he, like I mentioned, he does uh he just tells one of the Superman stories and he also did one called Wrestling Isn't What Wrestling. Yeah. In which he tells a story of Triple H like, throughout the years yeah max landis while mostly known for a screenwriter and he he has a fan base and it's a very nerdy fan base as he's a fellow nerd mm-hmm. and he's he's written some movies that people like like we like chronicle yeah um he did american ultra which mm-hmm. i haven't seen but people like yeah I've, I've heard good things from it i know he's got that show dirk gently or something like that i don't that. even know about that i i know it's a show People have said real good positive things about it. Yeah, you know, but I again, I've just the only thing I've ever been exposed of his Chronicle and yeah. the wrestling isn't wrestling. Yeah, which 
me and you, we've had kind of a complicated history with Max Landis because we were both kind of fans of him, especially uh-huh. after wrestling isn't wrestling, I think, because mm-hmm. obviously our job and our personal yeah. interests were very much into the world of wrestling. Uh-huh. And wrestling isn't wrestling is fucking brilliant. I will never deny that. It's one of the best, funniest things I've ever seen. Yeah, like you you, you don't even have to be a fan of wrestling. He just no. he tells the story of wrestling through one character. That it's character, specifically for people who don't know wrestling and people who do know wrestling just get more out of it. Yeah. But it's just like, here's why people like wrestling. Here's what it's all about. And it's presented in a funny and ner- nerdy kind of comical way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like we were following him on Twitter and then it got to the point where I just had to unfollow him because yeah. he's very outspoken, which is fine. But he's very matter of fact in the way he's outspoken. Yes. And it's kind of like if you don't agree with him, you're kind of an idiot or some somewhere along those lines. And so I was just kind of like, you know what? I'm out. I couldn't do it anymore. Like he's he, he's OK with some things and just a little too heavy on other things. Yeah. Some things he he's very black or white about things. There's never much of a gray yeah. area. It's either, like I said, black or white, which yeah, yeah it does make it He'll a come hard. hard at you if he's white and you're coming from a black perspective. Yeah. Not trying to make that sound racist. Yeah, not, not a racial <laughs> thing, you know? It, again, um, you know, it's just, that's yeah. the way he is. Yeah. You know? um, so yeah, when I stumbled upon this Power Ranger script, I was like, I have to bring this to you. Yeah. Because <laughs> just for the Max Landis aspect alone. And it sounds like some of this stuff is going to be in this movie coming out, uh-huh. but he's not listed as a writer on the movie. Yeah, I mean, I, I did, I because I was following it in real time. Yeah, you because, knew more. You already knew about it when I brought yeah, it up. Yeah, because I, I believe it was right around the time that it came out that he'd written a version of the Fantastic Four that Josh Trank wanted to use. Yeah, but the studio, you know, the studios got involved, all that. And he'd also pitched, uh, you know, the, the this Power Ranger movie that's coming out now. Yeah, so those were around the same yeah, time. Yeah, he, you know, he went so far as to getting someone to, you know, draw up the Megazords for him. Draw oh, up is costumes. there concept art out here for yeah, this? Yeah, there's concept Fuck. art somewhere in, like, Divine Art. If you, you can find it. But I was following it basically in real time as it was happening. So I was more familiar with it. I just hadn't read it myself, you know. But, yeah, I mean, when you brought it to me and I read it, you know, just reading the whole thing, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that you can kind of like, oh, I've seen this. Yeah. Kind of, you know, I kind of get the gist of this, like from the trailer, you know, like it's something I've always kind of picked out from watching his movies of what kind of guy is he? And when you read his writing, you kind of uh, that's fine. You kind of get the idea that Max Landis is a nerd who wants to beat up nerds. Oh, yeah. But, like, still wants to be accepted by them. Like, just some of... Like, there's even moments in the script, like, the writing itself, where he describes Billy as, like, calling him a nerd would be... Wouldn't be far off or whatever. Like, it'd be harsh, yeah, like, but it wouldn't be far yeah, off. Yeah, I mean, we, like, we can jump right into it. The minute where... The, the movie itself opens up with, like... Like a comet, you know. Yeah, a little comet, bit of backstory. A little bit of just backstory. Yeah, comet crashing the earth. You know, the whole title sequence, and then we're introduced to Billy and Jason. Yeah, and who are kind of our main characters for the movie. Yeah, for like the they're those Rangers that get the most screen time. Yeah. Like it's not like the TV show where they're all five hanging out and all friends at the same yeah, time. That, the, yeah, the one thing from the bat that you know you that distinguishes itself from the TV show is in they're the TV all show. Kind of punks. In the TV show, they were all kind of just friends you yeah. know there wasn't anyone any two people you would you know oh. i actually watched the first episode of the tv show like a couple of weeks ago oh, yikes yeah, it's, 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 it's a little it's a little rough it's, but yeah it's a little it's, i mean there's things about it that hold up yeah I, hey listen the one thing and we'll we'll get into it more you know there was certain where they introduce certain characters like when they introduce goldar you know we'll, we'll get into that but when they yeah. introduce goldar the description for him is just straight up out of the TV show. You yeah. Know? There's uh, only a couple designs that are from the TV show, though. Because it's like mm-hmm. Goldar and Zed are basically exactly how they're described from yeah. the TV show. But everyone else is just crazy, weird alien thing. Yeah, which... um. I you know I get it. There's some things where you want to ground it into a more real, yeah. realistic... Or you want to change it and make it your own. Yeah, which is, you know, it's fine. But I, I've said it. You know, and if you watch the pre the preview for the movie, you see the giant gold. Yeah, what robot, is Goldar? What is supposed to be Goldar? And I don't care what anyone says. I think a different take on the original Goldar costume would have worked. You know, obviously change it up, yeah. make it look a little bit more menacing. You know, something something different as opposed to like 
here's a giant gold dripping yeah. mess of like oh, fuck which off. At, at this point we this will come out the day the movie comes out but at this point we haven't seen it so we can only make speculation i'm assuming there might be like this is a crazy theory i'm gonna throw out there and uh-huh. it'll I assume there might be a gold mine or something in the town or maybe like I think she takes all that gold from somewhere uh, and manipulates it into this creature. And that's where yeah. where the gold are is going to come from in this new movie. I mean, possibly because well, like the whole the whole gist of this movie is Rita, Rita Repulsa. Yeah. Her evil plan is to like suck all the energy out of the Earth's core. Uh, yeah. Well, she wants to collect the pieces of Zordon's ship. Mm-hmm. So we get the we get the backstory of basically like Zordon had another group of Power Rangers long ago and Rita was a former Power Ranger and she had gone rogue and joined Lord Zed who's trying to take over the universe and they're basically like space cops which yeah. is you know that transitions into the TV show as well like the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers it wasn't defined as being like alien cops but that's clearly Zordon came from somewhere. But yeah. in this, they just they kind of lay it out like, yo, we've been around space, we got stuck here, mm-hmm. and we managed to trap her, but everyone kind of died in the process, and Zordon was the last one left. And so Rita wants to collect the pieces of the ship, and that'll help her escape. But in the process, that's going to destroy Earth, because they have to suck out the energy to power the ship. Yeah, which I think in the movie, they, they probably, like you said, go with like the gold aspect of it, because... All the, like all the crazy stuff that happens towards like the third act of this movie, I'm just like, oh, like that's you're having like catastrophic earthquakes yeah. and just things like that. Where I'm like, that's a little too, that's a little too much for yeah. like here's chapter one of what they said <laughs> they wanted to be like what 13 movies or something. Yeah, there was that conference call. Well, I mean, this script, I don't know if how far along this made it, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, there was a conference call about the new movie where the guy says they could see making six or seven of them, which yeah. you know we'll see. Yeah, it's just like hey, like if if I think the it's Marvel make a lot Universe, of yeah, if the Marvel Universe and the the DC Universe to a lesser extent can pull <laughs> off, you know, two movies a year or yeah. even Star Wars, you know, once every other year, hypothetically they could do it. You know, because there's so many iterations of the Power Rangers. I wonder if they're going to go into that, too, or if it's going to be like six or seven Mighty Morphin. Like, will they go to in space, you know? So yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, you could, because there's three seasons of the original yeah. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers as opposed to, like, the one or two of every other one, I would. it just seems as if you could pull more from that original series, you know, cash in more nostalgia with that. You yeah. know, they might even do three. Who knows? You know, because yeah. and I think the nostalgia is going to make this movie a lot of money. Oh yeah, like it was the most watched trailer on YouTube for a while. And yeah, yeah. There's advertising all over for this thing. Yeah, and then on on top of that, you have Jason David Frank, who played Tommy Oliver in the original series. You know, that guy has a, such a strong following. Oh yeah, and that guy is a hype machine. There is a there's a con specifically for Power Rangers, and they're all going to go see this movie. Yeah, yeah, um, of course, yeah. But I mean, we're now we're just trailing off into talking about yeah, the movie yeah. coming right, out. Yeah, so we I'm go, excited for it. But yeah, um, yeah. So we're introduced to Billy and Jason, and they're like on a beach cleaning up. You know, kind of the typical Power Ranger stuff we see them do. And then we get the introductions to the classic Bulk and Skull, who mm-hmm. have very little screen time in this. Yeah, I was. I thought they would be in there more for like comedic relief, and they're they're not that funny no, in this whatsoever. The, they get introduced making fun of Billy, and then Jason kicks one in the face. Yeah, because that's what high school students do. Yeah, they're just and it was that scene in particular where with the way Max Landis was writing it, where she's like, "Oh, come on, dude!" Like, yeah, you can really tell this guy hates nerds. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's just like, "Oh yeah, Jason Roundhouse kicks people in the face," and we get the idea that this is something he's done quite a bit. Yeah, they they make sure to beat you over the head with Jason is a badass. Yeah, or he and he but he's also a fuck up. Yeah. And that's something that this new movie like it's elements like that that seem to carry over. Like, oh, let's not make the Rangers just preppy kids. Like they all got problems. And we've seen that in the trailer where, Mm -hmm. you know, they're all Abercrombie and Finch models, but they're all like, we're all losers because that would ever be. Yeah, it's like, listen, you can't be a sexy loser. You know, yeah. you just, you can't. That, but Sorry, not in the high school I ever went to. Yeah, no, no, no. You know, I was, I was the only sexy loser in my high school, you know, but the rest of us, they all look like trolls. Yeah. You know, but no, it's interesting. Like the one thing you said, they made sure to define everyone. The one thing they did that was different from the TV show is Kimberly yeah. was a badass. Like, <laughs> they, not even a badass. She's the biggest loser of them all. Like she, they just make her to be this like, 
He really Fuck goes him. out of his way to stick it in the face of the norm. Yeah. Which is you know, multiple things yeah, in the like script. When we're that. introduced to Kimberly, who in the TV show... She's, she's a dropout. She's Well, in the TV show, she's this girl next door. She's the perfect student. Yeah. She's in gymnastics. She's mm-hmm. the preppy girl. I mean, you know, let's go hang out at the mall. Like, that was her character. Yeah. And here they're like, yeah, she just got dumped by like her 30 year old boyfriend yeah. who's in a shitty band. And she's a high school dropout. Yeah. She's just been going around the country with this band. Yeah, it was just, just like, okay, yeah, like we, we get it, you know? Yeah. And I don't remember much of Trini from the, from the show. But Trini was kind of, she was just kind of there. Like, yeah. she ne- like Trini and Zach in the TV show, they never had major storylines. Like, Zach had a kind of forced love interest that never really goes anywhere. And Trini was just always there for, like, support. Mm-hmm. And she plays, she actually plays more of a role in the script. Like, honestly, I would say in the script, Zach is kind of the one who is just kind of there. Yeah, he's definitely just... I'm here for comedy. Yeah, but and he's there to be the Pink Ranger, which yeah. is another thing. Yeah, which we'll, we'll we'll get to that, you know, as soon as yeah. every, everyone starts to get their coins. But yeah, I mean, it's just as as soon as everyone's introduced, you know, they let you know Billy and Jason are great friends. When Zach's introduced, they let you know. Oh, they you know, used to be friends, but then yeah. Zach became too cool for them. Zach became too cool for Jason and Billy. And they stopped hanging out. Yeah, you know, and which in the in the show would kind of be the role Jason would fulfill. He's kind of the, I mean, he's the leader. He's kind of the popular one. Mm-hmm. But um, they, you know, they also let you know, which they they also let you know that Kimberly has the hots for Billy. Which yeah, again, it was just and Jason and Trini are dating. Like he's uh, just mixing everything up just for the yeah. sake of mixing it up. Yeah, which is it's fine. Yeah, you know, it's, and I think this because in the show Kimberly was always with. Tommy. Tommy, yeah. But in this, even in the new movie, it looks like it's going to be Kimberly and Jason. Which also, uh, probably like 15 pages in, I don't know. They name drop yeah, Tommy Oliver. They name drop Tommy Oliver. Yep. It's it, it's one of those things where they're definitely. Like, oh, didn't she used to date Tommy Oliver? Yeah, where they're definitely, you know, letting, like, hey guys, let, wink, let, wink. letting you know this guy exists in the, you know, in the universe. It's, yeah. It's the equivalent of, you know, in a Marvel movie where they say, you know, Stephen Strange. Something's happening in what Wakanda? Yeah, was Wakanda. that line in Age of Ultron? Yeah, or yeah, like in Civil or in Captain America too, where they're just like Stephen Strange. Yeah, when they're know? on the computer, they have the names of people. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's just literally the same thing. Letting you know, hey, this guy exists. He's in our universe. Yeah, and, and that's this script is dated 2014, so it's well into the world of hey, we're gonna establish a universe with this movie because yeah. that's just what you do now. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, early on, this script, definitely Max Landis, like, because you got to think, the general audience currently for Power Rangers is kids. Yeah. And like, you know, adults our age, like mm-hmm. mid to late 20s, yeah. that grew up watching it. Mm-hmm. And he really draws the line on, let's be a little cheesy and kid friendly, but at the same time, they're going to call people dicks. Of and course, like, yeah. Like, you see, like, my, my nephew, my five-year-old nephew, Yokelis, I, I talk about him a lot. I'll probably <laughs> mention him. Yokelis is so on, great. Yeah, on, so many more of these podcasts. But Just think shit my dad says with like a four-year-old. Oh, God, yeah. Five, <laughs> this kid, oh, my God. I'm, I'm not even going to get into that because we'll go into a whole 40-minute yeah. podcast about him. But he's great. I love him. Uh, but, you know, he's a fan of the Power Rangers. But the classic Does he watch TV like the show, current Power Rangers? I don't know. Because it's all on Netflix. Yeah, like he'll watch Power Rangers. Yeah. I, you know, to him, it's, it's one of those things where it doesn't really matter which one. Like... You know, he's all about, he just wants to see, you know, someone get their face punched. You know, like he just wants to see yeah. the bad guys. And I mean, that was kind of yeah, the cool you know, thing of the show is like yeah. we would come home from kids and watch this fucking martial arts show. Yeah. Cause and you, that's basically what it was for me. Yeah. Because, you know, I know I've tried to get him to watch more, uh, you know, superhero movies. And it's one of those things where he's like, <sighs> everyone's just talking. You know, like he just wants to see them fight and yeah. stuff. You know, which Power Rangers, 22 minute episodes, half of it's usually fighting. Yeah. You know, it's exposition, exposition. Here's one fight where everyone's going to lose. And yeah. then here's fight two where everyone's going to win. You know, that's about it. But yeah, you know, so I felt like this was definitely more geared towards teenagers or like I said, pe- yeah, people our age because. Yeah. I mean, they definitely they want something it. that older people can go and enjoy. Yeah. Like, and, I mean, if this this movie, it's it's going to make a bunch of money. It might not make all the money but no it'll it, easily yeah. cover its budget which is just like a hundred million yeah but you know the way they're smart about it they're again appealing to the younger generation which if you're gonna make try to make all the money then you gotta bring everyone you know yeah. 
And, and this script definitely plays with that angle. Um, so we go from the beach to Jason getting yelled at by his police dad about him being a screw up. Which is straight up in the trailer. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, it's like I am wondering. I mean, because I remember when they put out the casting call for the actual movie that they described Jason as like he got into a car accident, which they show in the trailer. He's like, you're going to keep this here to remind me of my screw ups or whatever. And it's yeah. like a messed up truck or whatever. So they're definitely keeping the angle. And I wonder if how much of that came from this script. Yeah, because I mean, in the script, they in the script they definitely let it know Jason is a fuck up. He gets into a lot of fights. Yeah, you know, his dad confronts him. You know, why were you fighting? And I felt like everyone was too hard on him about that. Like he was he was sticking up for Billy. Yeah, you know, Billy was his nerdy friend. Who even Billy was like, why did you stick up for me? But it's one of those things where, you know, he. I, I would kind of see him as like an older brother figure to him where he's yeah. going to watch out for him. That's his friend. And, you know? and that's basically Billy's whole story arc for this script is he's the nerd who can never stand up for himself and we're going to watch him learn to stand up for himself. Yeah. And like they really hammer it in. Like, I get it. You always needed me to protect you and blah, blah, blah. Until eventually Billy's like, no, I'm going to do it this time. Yeah. Which, you know, it, the way they do it too, you know, it, it works. It's yeah. Not, it's, it, it totally works. It doesn't works. feel forced. You know, they don't beat you over the head with it. It just kind of all happens organically. But, yeah, I mean, they let it know Jason's a fuck up. You know, yeah. everyone's, oh, my God, you got into another fight. You got into a fight again. And, you know, right, like, literally right before we meet Zordon for the first time. Yeah. You know, it's Trini, who's his girlfriend, his on and, on and off again girlfriend. Like, they, you know. Yeah, they're, like, they're, they had recently just broken up for, like, the umpteenth time. And they're she's kind of finding it as, well, this is the last time. Yeah. And this is also when we get introduced to Kim who like immediately starts flirting with Billy and it's just like, all right, so I see you're, Mm -hmm. you're just mixing up all the character relationships. Yeah. So we, we skipped a part there. It's (laughs) there's a, which I was like, fuck off Uh, night at the museum exhibit. There's some, there's some sort of excavation. Yeah. They go to the museum and that's where we see Goldar's armor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We see Goldar's armor, the staff, Rita's staff, uh, a head. It's like a, a putty head, I think that's like yeah, like fossilized they, they, yeah, or something like, a stone like that. Head. Yeah, but the, the, see, that was one of those things where I'm like, I've never heard of the cool thing in town is for all the high school yeah. kids to go to a museum at well, night. No, they actually get Jason there by saying there's free drinks, so they lure him there with free champagne, which you know, a bunch of kids going crazy for champagne. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that's their thin explanation of getting them there. Yeah, you know, and and when they're there, you know, they pointed out yeah you know here's some gold armor which from the get-go i was like oh, okay cool that's gold bar you know and the scepter and shortly after that is when we're introduced to zordon you know it, there's a he crashes into like a vine field. yeah he like comes from space like i guess mm-hmm. there's something orbiting the earth and he's mm-hmm. kind of picking up on hey some bad shit's going on because this thing there's this thing that came from space did you need a cough Okay, there's this thing that came from space in the beginning of the script, which we basically is to understand, like, this is what Rita is coming from, because they're a little vague on it. And then, so Zordon just, cut, yeah, he crashes into a field, which happens to be by Trini's. But I'm actually thinking, and is... You see, the, the thing with Trini, too, is you had to understand, she's a fucking nerd. Like, she yeah. is so uptight. Yeah, and the like script will not let you forget that yeah. she's a really uptight nerd who's not going to... She's never stepped out of line in her entire yeah, life. Which I was just, which was again weird because in the original TV show, it was pretty much I'm the Yellow Ranger, and that's about it. Yeah. The most interesting thing that happened with the Yellow Ranger in the original series is when they recast her. When they recast <laughs> her because the, you know the actress who played her passed away. No, I think it was, she passed away long after that. Oh well, she, they, you they know, were just I think I think it was a money dispute that they were cycling out three wow. of the characters and they brought in. The new red, black, yeah, and yellow ranger. Her name's yeah, Aisha. She's a real nice yeah. lady. I met her. Yeah, we met her. <laughs> yeah, we met her at C2E2. But yeah, I mean, that's again, that's the most interesting, you know, story arc with that character. Yeah. So to see her get much more of a bigger role in this well, was definitely interesting because, again, in the original run, it was just like, oh yeah, yeah. There is oh, a, in the yellow one, there is a yellow ranger. Yeah. You know. But um, I also forgot we we do meet Zach at the uh, museum as well. Yeah, that that's where they tease the whole. I mean, Jason's kind of. He's like, oh, there's Zach. And he's like, yeah, there's Zach. And Zach, trying to be a nice guy, you know, he comes over 
tries to talk to with Billy and Jason. And yeah, they and they just, just, everyone just kind of brushes. They each brushes other him off. off. Yeah, and the thing you learn about Zach is because he's on they, the football. Yeah, team. Yeah, they see him as a cool kid, but on the actual football team, no they one, all hate him. Yeah, they all hate him. They're always, you know, he tends to choke up during games. Yeah, and they all just give him shit for that. Yeah. So you know, it was kind of interesting to see that. You know, it wasn't just here's the jock. You know, to me, if you've seen Chronicle. I kind of pictured him playing like the Michael B. Jordan yeah. role where was just this cool football player but was also real tight with like the nerds. Yeah. So that's kind of how, you know, that struck me. But yeah, you know, we're, we're basically introduced to them and it's kind of known. Yeah, the museum is kind of like, here's all your rangers. Yeah, that's also where you see for the first time that Kimberly's interested in Billy. Yeah. She's, you know, she's a scrap. And she just, just basically straight up says it. Yeah. And it's all this like, yo, dude, she's clearly into you. Mm-hmm. But since Billy's the nerd, he's just like, nah, man, Kim would never be into yeah, me. Yeah, he just, he doesn't see it. And that kind of, and you, you see that reflected on Kimberly where she's kind of taken aback. Yeah, like she's what? Like, like, yeah, she's I'm like, basically throwing myself at you. Yeah, she's all but throwing herself at this guy. And he's kind of just like, oh, yeah. yeah. And and this is what leads us to Trini's house. Because mm-hmm. Jason and Billy, they go to Trini's house. And Trini's like, dude, come on. She likes you. Mm-hmm. And this is also where we get introduced that Jason and Trini, they're like, you know, on a break or whatever. They're mm-hmm. broken up because he just can't fucking stay focused. Billy lets it drop that he got into a fight. And then she gets mad about that. And then that's when Zordon crashes into her yeah. field. Which... Also, which was different again this zordon this zordon and alpha it's fucking weird yeah they're way different from the original the original ones you know in the original run as far zordon's as a guy tell, in a tube he's just a guy in a tube yeah except and, in the movie where they show the tube broken and he's this weird fucking cocoon guy yeah. which i never understood but you know they describe him as et mixed with some sort of distant undersea squid yeah a lot which, of tentacles in this movie because yeah. rita is kind of described in a similar way yeah you yeah but it's just, it's that was just weird. Like, I, I didn't understand. I didn't understand the like direction. Like, and I guess that's one of my biggest problems with the script is aside from the characters, he doesn't really mess with that much. A lot of the design of the characters doesn't seem practical. It just seems weird. Yeah, because if Zordon, you see, Zordon's from Eltar, and I, El, the people from Eltar, you, so Rita would hypothetically also be from there because. She was also, you know, we would be safe to assume that his team of rangers would all be the same species. Yeah, they would all be the same species, human, not not necessarily human, but humanoid. Yeah, and if both if both Zordon and Rita are from Eltar, and one is a squid creature and the other one isn't, there's something fucking weird. Yeah, going now on what there. are those ranger co- like? Do the ranger coins just form a suit around your body, or are they all humanoid type suits? I mean, I guess I would assume it would just yeah. conform Cause I mean, cause, to whatever yeah, you I mean, are. Once Zordon starts communicating with with them, he lets it know. He lets it be known, <laughs> which he ba- he can't communicate at first. It's basically like an alien, like yeah. it's like, like screaming at you. Yeah. But then he can kind of mingle with electronics and then talk through the electronics. Yeah, which he does. He does that. And he lets them know, you know, oh, this is how I'm interfacing with everything and communicating yeah. with you all. And Alpha Five is basically just like a floating disc that he later connects to a robot body. Yeah, which also at the same time, like Alpha Alpha's design in the original like series was okay it was to me you didn't need yeah. to change it into this like weird i mean if, if you look at the toys now you see what they did with it and that's i mean basically in the in the new trailers and stuff you get a good look at what the new alpha yeah. five is and for the most Which part i think you're a little more critical i'm okay with it uh-huh. like i think we've kind of disagreed a little bit like yeah eh, I'm, I'm just like whatever yeah. i mean they describe fine. they describe it in here too and it's basically that they you know that's probably one of the things that they kept the same because it's described and it well, looks the thing the is that i don't know if you caught it they made him big like he's not yeah. waist sized robot. He so that like I mean we're skipping way ahead, but for a long time Alpha Five's kind of like a floating saucer with like some kind of legs or tentacles or whatever. Uh-huh. And then they fight like a giant security robot that Billy knocks its head off, and Alpha Five just takes that body. So he's like, I'm trying to think of another big robot from a movie, but he's he's just like a he's like a huge hulking robot, but it's Alpha Five. Yeah, which that's you know that's also a little weird, but you know. Kind of getting back on topic, Zoran explains, you know, he's from Eltar. Him and his team of rangers were coming here to Earth, and one of them was Rita. You know, yeah. she stabs him in the back. The joins command, up with Zed. So, yeah, joins up with Zed, and you know, the their ship crashes, and 
what they use for the command center is in- the command center of the ship. Yeah, the it's just like a piece of the ship. Yeah, which it seems to be the command center. Some of the stuff, the way he described it, got a little confusing to understand yeah. the location of things. But it seems like there's a there's like a dig site around the town, Angel Grove, and that's where the command center is, is in this mm-hmm. dig site. And he's able to like cloak it so even though people are looking at it, they can't see it type situation. And yeah. then the rest of his ship is just scattered around the world. Yeah, which, you know, he tells them about that and then he lets them know he he needs the scepter. You know, he tells them, yeah, Rita's they have to already get the looking scepter. for the scepter. She's already here. She's already looking for yeah, it. Yeah, which and there's something happening in the ocean. There's like a thing drawing power from the earth in the ocean. Yeah. Which we never really get an explanation of. No, like Kimberly. Kimberly's oh, that's only- the thing. Because right from the beginning, communications are out all around the world. And that's the thing that's blocking the communications. Yes. That's what it is. Yes. So whatever it's doing is blocking communications. Yeah. It's... Yeah, and it's. I thought it was just Angel Grove they would be doing it, but apparently it's worldwide. It's, it's the world. Yeah. Yeah. So eventually, it's basically they, Zordon and Alpha Five show up on Trini's farm, and then the three of them take Zordon and Alpha to the command center. Is that where they go next? See, and then no, that no. is that when he gives them the coins? Yeah. Well, he well he gives Jason a coin. Yeah. He gives Jason a coin and tells him go it, go get me the scepter. Him and Trini have to go get the yeah, scepter, and he lets it, he lets it be known. Do not use the power coin unless you, know. you need to, because yeah, she can detect like, it and she'll know yeah. that he's alive. Yeah, which of course, if you've met Jason, of, yeah, of course he's gonna fucking use it. Yeah, and then he gives Billy a coin, mm-hmm. kind of for, and then so yeah, so Jason and Trini go to the museum to get the scepter, and then Billy is taking Zordon and Alpha Five. Oh, Billy and Zach. Yeah, because somehow Zach, he basically no, needed Zach, a, not not Zach. Yeah, am I jumping ahead? It's or no, no he, yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, because this is so. At one point, they're at the school. They go back to school, and that's when the cops show up, and they say, hey, all the power is out, everything's oh, out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I skipped a huge fucking chunk. Yeah. They they trap Zordon in the trunk of the car. Oh, yeah. They yeah. knock him out in Alpha 5, and they just stuff him into the trunk of the car, and they go to school, and they're just trying to have a normal day, and they're like talking to her like, what the fuck are we going to do? They've got this alien in our trunk, and yes, that's, that's when the when communications Zach, That's when Zach overhears them, and he's like, you have what in the trunk? Well, he gets left by the other football players, and he needs a ride, mm-hmm. so they all go to Trini's house to kind of, and they let Zach in on what's going on, and like, well, we got to let this alien out and figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. And, and then, then that's when they go to yeah. the museum and then Yeah, so Zach and Billy, yeah, they take Alphonse around to the command center and Jason and Trini go to break into the museum to get Rita's scepter. The only thing is is that once they go over there, the putties are already there. It's and a putty, a single putty. Yeah, a putty. You know, they've already like they get there and the museum's already been like broken into. Yeah, and it's all trash. Yeah. And Jason's the only one to go to go in there. You yeah, know, Trini, Trini waits outside. Yeah, she waits outside. Um and this is this is right when we get introduced to Goldar. Yeah, the putty, the, he basically describes as putting this blue furry ball into the armor, and it just mm-hmm. spreads into the armor, and Goldar comes to life. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure most people, most people might not be familiar with Goldar by name, <laughs> but he is a, he's the giant blue monkey lion thing in the golden armor from the original yeah, show. Yeah, if you if I can, he's got that weird voice like "Hey, Power Rangers," yeah. like from the original series. Uh. You Which I, there's one thing I like. So Jason starts fighting the putty because he gets the, the putty takes the scepter and he's kind of getting the upper hand on the putty, but he has to morph. Yeah. And so, so that's the thing. He he doesn't morph until he sees that his dad is in peril. His dad is a police officer. Yeah. And he and, can't let his dad see him. So yeah. he's like, well, I guess I got to morph. Yeah. Because, yeah, he it's. Uh, like the museum's alarm, which is that was one of the things where I was like, well, no, no, no electronics are working, but like the museum. Well, they just said communications. They didn't specify electronics. Mm. Um, I will say there don't seem to be any morphers in this. He just gives them coins. Yeah. And it sounds like they just kind of like punch the coin. Yeah, is it, how it's described. Yeah, it was wasn't really. You know, they just say they get the coin and then morph. Yeah, they don't. Re- yeah, they don't really. At one point, they say Billy punches a coin. Yeah. But aside from that, there's no real description on how the morphing occurs. Yeah. And there's also no description of the suit. They refer to it as armor. So you can kind of picture Mm -hmm. probably what this new movie is where it looks like metallic armor. Mm -hmm. It's multiple, multiple times in the script. It's referred to as armor, not a suit. But that's kind of our only description of what the suits are like. Yeah, aside from that, it's pretty much... And then the color. Yeah, just left to your imagination. Yeah, but, which, I mean, that's generally how a script would be, and that's up to the mm-hmm. director and designers yeah. and all yeah. that shit. But, yeah, I mean, Goldar essentially winds up beating the shit out of Jason. You yeah, know? like and he's... They describe... So the coins kind of... 
this is something that's different from the series. It it alters them all differently. So Jason, he's a fighter, so his fighting skills are enhanced. Trini, she's like a track star, so she's super fast. And Zach is kind of just enhanced physically because yeah, of his like, athletics. Yeah, he's just real. Billy Sue is probably the most interesting because it gives him like devices and stuff. Because yeah. Billy, he's, he can you also know, camouflage. Yeah. Um, so that was actually a kind yeah. of an interesting and then thing. I think Kimberly, she gets like, she gets like spikes. She gets she brass be- knuckles. Or yeah. Something. She becomes like a brawler basically. Yeah. Cause they say that she hits the hardest or whatever. Yeah. Which I, I like that aspect of it. Uh-huh. Um, which yeah, it was cool. Cause again, in the original series, they're all she, just kind of the same. Yeah. And especially with her, she was more so of like the damsel in distress yeah. almost every week. Yeah. You know, she, for the most part was, was a way to get to Tommy, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, and then this one they made, you know, again, she all the costumes were different things. It seems like hers, you know, as far as actually fighting, yeah. would probably be the best because of yeah. his brass knuckles. And, like, as as much as he changes things for the sake of changing them, and some of them seem like, ah, oh, come on, man, this one actually is a good addition to the series. Like, having their all be unique in some way is a cool idea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that this leads to Jason battling Goldar, and he's able to fight back the putty, and then Goldar is just kind of like laughing at him. Yeah. And then he he Goldar is under the impression that Jason is a Power Ranger coming from space. Mm-hmm. But then he realizes that he has Zordon's old coin, so he knows that Zordon is alive. Yeah, and that kind of the, the one tips the one thing off. I I kind of found interesting too was the cops and. Yeah, it was just the cops. They couldn't understand Goldar. Yeah. Know, because he was... He speaks in some alien language, but the suit automatically translates. That was another cool idea. I yeah, like. which I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, because it doesn't really make sense for them to speak English. 40,000-year-old uh, aliens to understand English. Yeah. So, yeah, that was... that and Again, that was another thing he changed that I like. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the one good thing, too, was Jason lost that fight yeah you know he loses that first fight which a lot of this script is them losing for a long time yeah. so while this is happening billy and zordon they get into the command center and the um there's like a security robot that's come to life and it's old so it's kind of gone haywire and it's attacking them and billy has to morph to defeat that mm-hmm. and then that's where alpha five ends up taking his body yeah. so already we got they weren't supposed to morph and both of them have already morphed yeah and even then it's even though he's morphed, he's and he puts up a somewhat of a fight. Yeah, it's not good enough. No, the only, the only they're way, all fun, they're all fumbling at the moment. Yeah, the way the way the fight ends essentially is Trini he sneaks up on it. Well, Trini runs him over with a car. Oh, you're talking about Goldar. Sorry, with I thought Goldar, we were talking yeah, about Billy. The, the fight, yeah, the fight with Goldar. Trini just straight yeah, up just runs him. him over. It was very reminiscent of in Logan, where spoilers if you haven't seen it, but I'm. I'm sure most people who listen to this have. Yeah. So again, just fast minor, forward it's a minor 10, 15 seconds. Uh, but when X24 is just beating the shit out of Logan. Yeah. And she and, hits him with the car. Yeah. And, he, get, the and he gets hit by a truck. You know, that just kind of reminded me of that where it's kind of a cheap way of like, you know, you didn't win the fight, but yeah. you know, here's your way out, you know? And then, you know, they, they all wind up meeting up. Zordon, Zordon scolds them, you yeah. know, for using the coin. And, and, and this is when the Dominators arrive, which yes. is... So, there was... A, I, I totally had forgotten about some of these characters. So, mm-hmm. in the original show, there was Goldar, Squat, and Babu, who all hung out at Rita's castle. Yeah. And I remembered those three. There's also Finster. Who, yeah, who he was the one who created the monsters, right? Yeah, Finster was like the little old... Which Finster's not in this, right? Or is there a name? He's in... We'll is there get, a name we'll, drop? We'll, we'll get to Finster. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so Babu, like... For, Squat and Babu were just kind of there. Yeah. Babu is, like, the tall, like, bird monkey-looking guy. Yeah, and, and Squat looks like a the, small, fat pig. Yeah, he, he's, a little, he's a little goblin, you yeah. know? Yeah. Shout out to Meridian and Sarah, you know, goblin. <laughs> but, yeah, they're the two bumbling idiots who Goldar's yeah. always just yelling and hitting, you know? And uh, they also introduced you to Scorpina, who... I just fucking completely yeah. forgotten about yeah. from the L- series. Literally, as Jeremy was reading the script, he finished it before me. He came up to me and mentioned Scorpina, and I was like, what the... F- what are you talking about? <laughs> like, his name's Scorpion, and he's in Mortal Kombat, you idiot. And then we Googled it, we're like, oh, no, yeah, there was a chick who yeah. essentially just... A woman wearing... It's a like version the of Goldar's, King? yeah. She's wearing a version of Goldar's armor, but it's just all Scorpion themed. Yeah, and I, he, I think she had like a like a stabber pincer thing on her arm, some sort of weird thing. But but in the, this, she's like a fucking just full on Scorpion creature. Yeah, they say she doesn't talk. She just 
just hisses. hisses and yeah. yeah. Everyone in this is very animalistic as far mm-hmm. as the monsters go. Yeah. And then I think it's shortly after that, it's still Zordon talking to everyone. It's he, we in, Now we were talking about the Zords. Yeah, he brings up the Zords, which I thought was a pretty cool way of like, this is why they look like animals. Uh, yeah. He, you know, he lets them know that they're custom made and they just model after animals from, you know. Wherever they happen to be. Wherever they happen to be, yeah. And it kind of, you like know. Like whatever planet. Yeah. Which, you know, around the time I guess they came here, the only animals they really knew of were yeah. fucking dinosaurs and mastodons <laughs> yeah. and saber tooth tigers you know yeah. which okay cool that's cool because otherwise it's one of those things that doesn't really make sense where why these like alien robots look like, look like dinosaur. dinosaurs yeah. but you know they, they give us a reason it's like yeah. in the transformers movies they come here and they scan the cars yeah. you know which all, they all, came here and they scan yeah. dinosaurs also one thing they you know they let you know is they don't have the zords just like on retainer, they're scattered around yeah. the world. They're all hidden and they only know where the red one is. Mm-hmm. So they're like, you have to go to the red one, the the Tyrannosaurus, and you have to get it and recall all the other Zords because it has like a recall function. And so this is where they give Zack his power coin. Which I I remember <laughs> this happening, again, in real time. Yeah. And I pulled up the exact quote that Max Landis oh, you okay. know, had as to why he did that because Zach gets his coin and they don't they don't tell you that I mean the script tells you yeah because he's like whenever they hand somebody they get like an electrical shock of the color that represents their coin mm-hmm. so right away we notice he gets pink electricity and yeah. then when he finally mores he's like dude why'd you give me the pink one he's like well they don't know what color they are yeah which I was like uh huh okay yeah it's like oh but come on dude Max Landis is verbatim word for it explanation as to why because I remember he posted it yeah. up, like on Twitter he was like this is my favorite part this. of the script and people were like, uh, why, why? Why is Zach the Pink Ranger? To which he says, and I quote, <clears throat> to fuck with the audience. Plus, it fits into the plot. Which it doesn't. No. I not concocted at all. very ni- nicely. Implied, Zach will be Black Ranger in next movie. Which, not really. Like, they do mention they would switch coins. Oh, yeah. He, he makes like an offhand end. comment to Kimberly where he's like, Ooh, you want to switch? Yeah. And she's like, fuck off. Yeah. You know? Like, but yeah, I mean, again, and that's just one of those Max Landis things where. It's just yeah. doing it for the sake of doing it. Yeah. Like, hey, this will get people's attention. Yeah. This is different. This is weird. And why can't the guy be the Pink Ranger? Like, fuck off. Yeah. Which is like, hey, whatever. If you want to, like, you can make him the Pink Ranger if you want. I don't care. You know, I'm like. I don't care if you want to do it. It's just the way, I, you know, it's not, it's not like when they were like, yeah, the human torch, it's going to be a black guy now. That's the, whatever. That's fine. Yeah. That whatever. That's fine. He's on fire. It's like the, the idea time, of, you know? is if you wanted to make Peter Parker, Spider-Man, it's like, what's the, what is the defining characteristics of Spider-Man? He's a poor kid from Queens. That doesn't necessarily scream white. Yeah, dude, it could you be know? fucking, you know, Steven Galansberg, who's Spider-Man, yeah. you know, it could be anyone. But it was yeah. literally just different for the sake of being different, trying to push the envelope and just shoving it in people's faces. Like he said, to fuck with the fans mm-hmm. and for a good movie that does not make. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's, it is what it is. But the one interesting thing that does come from that is that Zordon reveals that Rita was in fact a former Ranger. Yeah. And you kind of, you can kind that's what most people are just assuming from the upcoming movie. Just yeah, it seems to be that she's the Green Ranger. And my theory for that is they're going to defeat Rita at the end of the movie and they're going to get her coin and that's going to play into the next movie because we have no idea if Rita's going to make it to the end of the movie or how that's mm-hmm. going to play out. Yeah. Um, and but, this script handles that idea a different way, which we'll get there. Yeah, you know, they let you know Rita was a former Ranger and she betrayed the team. Uh, you know, they were they were assigned to our galaxy yeah. to find the Dominators. But Rita eventually gives in to Zed, you know, Lord Zed, and, you know, he promises her the world. Yeah, and which he's, you know, he's name dropped throughout the script. Mm-hmm. Um, the and, what? Oh, go ahead. Oh, and she just reveals that she was the Black Ranger later on. Yeah, later on she reveals she was the Black Ranger, which, again, you, it's kind of, so in the trailers for this upcoming movie, it seems that Rita specifically going after Trini. Is that who, Trini? Yeah, she's, yeah, Trini, you know, the Yellow yeah. Ranger. So I, at first I thought, oh, maybe she used to be the Yellow Ranger, but then clear, like, she's... It, her outfit, like, looks like a tattered Ranger outfit, and it's yeah. green. Yeah, so, but, so, you know, And I she has know. a gold fucking staff, yeah. you know? And then the one also thing that's very, very different from this movie and the new one is that 
In the new movie, they have Elizabeth Banks, who is, is fantastic. She's an amazing. Like who, when who, they announced that phys- casting. Well, not only that, but physically, you know, she's a very attractive woman. Yes. You know, ten out of ten for me. But in this movie. Uh, She's Rita's a squid described monster. as a as the queen alien from Aliens with Maleficent from Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, you know, and again, it was just like, I don't what even was wrong know. with her original design? You yeah, know? that's again, she that's, was so great. There's an episode, so there's the the guy who does those reviews, which there's this website called the Top the Fourth Wall, and this guy did a video series called History of Power Rangers, and he goes through and reviews each season. He, he talks about an episode where I can't even remember what the setup was, but for some reason, Kimberly has to act like Rita Repulsa, mm-hmm. and he just plays the clip, and she does such an amazing fucking job at pretending to be Rita with the yelling and shit. Like, it's it's crazy how good she is See, at what's it. funny is, I guess I always just have a soft spot for Rita because, and I've mentioned it to Jeremy before, uh, growing up, my aunt, <laughs> yeah. she... I love her, but she's the goddamn devil. And <laughs> to the point where when she would describe herself as Cruella DeVille and Rita Repulsa from Power Rangers, <laughs> you know? So it was, it's it's one of those things where I've kind of just always had a soft spot for Rita because whenever you know I see her just, ah, Rangers, yelling at her, I'm like, oh, yeah, that just sounds like when she would yell at me, you know, <laughs> like me and my dumbass cousins. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, even, even in the original – one at one point you see that she is human you know yeah because there's i think it's it's at the end of uh the third season uh i don't know yeah for the third iteration when they're in space yeah uh which is this has nothing to do with because it starts but, off with like a meeting of the fucking villains yeah, or whatever because the, the thing about the original series and if this gets to be too much about the original series I apologize. I mean, it's Power Rangers. Yeah, it's hard to avoid yeah, it. I apologize, but I'm going to fucking talk about it. It was such a good series. Yeah. So by the time they get to Lost in Space, it's kind of just concluding. It's just in space. It's Lost coming, in space it's coming full totally circle. You know, it's wrapping up, you know, Mighty Morphin, uh, Turbo, S- Turbo and, Zio. and Zio, you know. And the one thing is Zordon's been captured. And, yeah. you know, the, the, ultimately the way to, you know, beat everyone is Zordon sacrifices himself. And when that happens, they show. I forgot this, like, about that. Yeah, this like giant. It's like a of, wave like, of good energy. A wave of good energy, and it's you see all like the villains from all the other series, and they kind of just they like, get hit by this energy and become good. Yeah, basically. think of the, I the best way to describe that. it is if you've ever seen the movie Little Nicky. Uh, <laughs> there's the one scene where Little Nicky. Uh, where he he finds out that he's part angel. Yeah. So he goes around telling people to release the good yeah. and hits them with like a positive beam of energy and like turns them, you know, into this big ball of positivity. Yeah. So that's the best way to describe it. When that happens, you see Rita and Lord Zed who are just, you know, like these old <laughs> curmudgeons get turned into this like attractive couple. Yeah. God, like, I totally forgot about that. You know, I need so to go back like, and rewatch oh, that. Yeah. So there were just humans this whole time. Yeah. Because again, in that movie, people from Eltar look like humans. Yeah. Cause wasn't the red Ranger from Eltar in that in in space? I, I want to say, know. yeah, it might, he might've been, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, again, and we're getting off topic. Yeah. So yeah. they got to go get the Zord. <laughs> they have to go get the Zord. Um, so yeah. Jason and Zach are shipped off to Asia mm-hmm. to go get the Zord. And this is when Rita finally comes into the script. Because at this point, we're like 50 pages in and haven't even seen Rita. Yeah. And she ends up showing up with the Dominators. Uh, this and is this full, like, Dark Knight Rises where you don't even see Batman until, like, an yeah, hour into this. like 45 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it's literally the same thing. Like, we see Goldar. We see a putty. You know, we've seen things. But and, they, and they reference her, too. There's, like, certain... Yeah, a lot you know, of references. You hear, you know, they have... They have you hear her voice. They, yeah. They she's imply that off she's screen. there. Yeah. And so it becomes, again, the team is separated. This time, Zach and Jason are fighting smugglers while trying to get the, the Zord. Mm-hmm. And... Trini and Billy have to go to Trini's house because for some reason the Dominators are making their way that way. I think that's because where Zordon crashed. So they're going to go investigate the energy from there. And obviously that's Trini's house where her parents are. So she has to go save her parents. And this is where she's given her yellow coin. Mm -hmm. So now we got Billy and Trini going to fight the Dominator. I think she goes on her own and Billy's still at the command center. And then he ends up showing up later. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, so Jason, he gets the Zord 
and Zach, that's when he finds out he has the pink coin because yeah. he beats up some smugglers like, dude, why did you give me a pink one? Um, and then while they're doing fucking with the Zord, it kind of takes a while. We're in Trini's house just fighting. Yeah. Um, so she she fights Scor- Scorpina and Squat and Babu, I think. And while Billy's yeah, like she's, fighting she's, like an army of putties, basically. Yeah, it's one of those things where they so they show up to Trini's house because the uh, that's basically where Zordon landed. So as far as they're concerned, they're just following his scent or his, yeah, his you know, energy his trail. Energy, his energy trail. Yeah, because it's one of those things. One of the things too is everything is essentially powered by their psionic energy, which is their fancy way of saying your life force. Yeah. You know, so they can sense him. They know, especially when the coins are activated. You yeah. Know? Like that's one of the things too, where he says, don't transport into the command center. Cause then they'll know yeah, where it because is. Cause then they'll know where it is. And of course everyone's getting their ass kicked. Yeah. Everyone's in trouble. Billy's fighting putties. Trini's, mm-hmm. she ends up getting fucked up by Rita, which is the first time we see her. Yeah. Like she's, she's taking on Scorpina because they're fighting in her house. She knows the layout of her house. And as I said before, her, coin gives her super speed so she's kind of like zooming around the house and getting the one up on her until rita shows up yeah. and I, it's, is this where she gets her staff or no that's when they go to the command that's, center. yeah so at this point they're all getting their asses kicked and zordon does the only thing he can do is teleport yeah, them he, out of he there teleports them out of there and that's you know that's when he's like oh fuck now they know he, exactly yeah, where the command center yeah, is he's like they're coming and sure enough I don't even think Kimberly is she introduced yet at this no, point. No, Kimberly. So oh, okay. So Kimberly, she, the Dominators were just attacking in the city before they went to Trini's, and Kimberly snuck onto their ship. They have this like hovercraft thing, mm-hmm. and she just snuck on with like a police baton or whatever. And while they're fighting in Trini's house, Kimberly pops up and like beats the shit out yeah, of she, Babu like, she or take, somebody. Yeah, she takes a cop's belt and leaves the gun there. Yeah, which I'm like. All right, it's a little weird. Yeah, it's a kids movie, so you yeah. kind of have to leave it there. But this, a lot of this would have just been solved if she would just took that gun, yeah, and put a bullet to. Rita. And it's like, why was she even doing this? Like, did she really feel like she needed to stow yeah. away on yeah, this thing? She's a one, kid. Yeah, that was the one thing too, where Kimberly went from like, I don't give a fuck, I'm gonna travel the world doing whatever I want, to all of a sudden she's gonna save to the all world. All of a sudden she's like, this is my world. She literally, I think she literally has a line where it's like, nobody messes up this town but me or something like that. Like yeah. only she can be a punk. There, there's here. one line yeah, where Rita tries to like, hey, come over to the dark side. That'll make you a queen. And she's just like, I am a queen of yeah. this planet. And it's like, fuck off. You like you were literally no one even knew <laughs> yeah. you were in town because you're off chasing thirty year old men. The way her and Zach are crammed into this script just feels really forced. Like he spends a lot of character time with Jason and Billy and Trini. Yeah. And Zach and Kimberly are just kind of there. Yeah. Um again, a lot of Zach's lines are just I'm here for exposition. Yeah. And like, you know, my buddies don't like me anymore, but I found new friends with you. Yeah. Yeah. Just they're very lacking on character development. Yeah. Which, I mean, you can't. Uh, it's hard. You got five yeah, characters. It's yeah. It's, you got and five you, characters. They're split up for 90% of this script. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> and then, then you also have to tell the story of Zordon. Yeah. And Rita. Yeah. And the impending there's, Zed. There's just a lot going on and splitting them up means you have to spend too much time throwing the story all over the place. Yeah, because there are various points where everyone is just split up. They're and, never all together until the last battle. Yeah. But even then, yeah, the one thing the one thing I did like is that they didn't just keep the same people together. They kind of switched up the dynamic. Yeah, the, the teams are mixed up quite a bit. Yeah. Um. And yeah, so everybody gets brought to the command center except for Jason and Zach who are fucking with the Zord, which it kind of like connects to you the way like I envision Pacific Rim is yes. kind of the same thing. Kinda like and that. it drains you. So like him using the Zord, they're like humans are never meant to have the power that it takes to power one of these things. So them being able to do it at all is impressive. Mm-hmm. Um. But since they all got transported to the command center and this is where Kimberly's given her coin which is the black coin um the dominators and Rita just show up and they basically just fuck everything up yeah and, and they let cuz and at first too Jason uh, he puts up a good fight well at this point Zord. Jason and Zach aren't even there yet cuz they teleport in with the Zord oh yeah yeah no. um so this is where Rita gets her staff mm-hmm. so now she's like all powerful basically and then the Zord just kind of teleports mm-hmm. in and it starts fucking with the uh, hovercraft. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And this whole time, uh, while they're getting the Zord, um, Zordon's trying to get like the the power back on, basically using like yeah, some they're sort trying of, to like they're trying to send a distress signal. Yeah, he's trying to send like a distress signal to the range. He keeps saying, "I need to send the you know signal to Altar to get know, the other Rangers get here." Other Rangers, and then once Rita shows up and they start. Telling each other their plans. Yeah. You know, Rita, which this didn't make sense to me. If, it, if I think it's what you're about to say, so just go ahead. Yeah. You know, Rita lets it be, she lets it known that the Altarian, El, I don't even the, know. The, the Altarian yeah, Empire yeah, or whatever. The Empire that it's dead, that the last Rangers the died. Lord, yeah, the Lords that had basically already conquered the universe. Yeah. How the fuck does she know that? Yeah. Because as far as we know, she's been locked away and shit. Yeah. And how does she know? Yeah, Where did she get she, this information? Yeah, she's like, yeah, they all died 15,000 years ago. But she just hypothetically, she just woke up. Yeah, a day or two ago, fifteen hours ago. Yeah, fifteen hours ago. <laughs> How does she know? Yeah, I mean, hy- you know, yes, you know, to play the devil's advocate, Goldar and company could have been like, "Hey, yeah. here's what's happened since you've been gone," and let her know what happened. The whole idea of where do the bad guys even come from in this script is not really addressed because this yeah. what what is this thing that came from space? Because yeah, who came off of that? How was it blocking electronics? Where did Rita come from? Where did this putty come from that brought back Goldar? It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot of it is kind of just left for you to, you know, it's left for the reader to, yeah. you know, put it together, which is it's fine. But I just hope there's a bet they do a better job of explaining it in the cin- cinematic version because yeah, yeah, a lot of it is just. Huh? Which in the original series, Rita was like trapped in a dumpster on the moon. Ah, after 15,000, yeah. you know, this is the whole opening scene. Yeah, yeah. There's astronauts. They find her little. Uh, they call team. it Day of the Dumpster is the name yeah. of the episode. So. Yeah. You know, they find her there and that's how she gets out. But here it's kind of just. Which is fine. Her being. Because yeah. in the whole concept of the script is her. She's been trapped on Earth and she wants to get off. So where does she get this information? See, I. When they started mentioning the scepter. I imagine it being kind of like a Lord Voldemort thing where once you get this thing, boom, here's the big bad evil that shows yeah. up. But that wasn't even the case. No, just, Rita's already around and yeah. she just needs it to be more powerful. Yeah, which... Which they never really explain why her having the scepter is such a bad thing. Yeah, because even in the... Like, clearly it makes her stronger, but we don't know how, we don't know yeah, why. I mean, in the commercials for the new movie... She already has her scepter. The, the, scep- the scepter, if you look in the middle, it essentially looks like... You can kind of tell that's where the power coin is. Yeah. So that makes sense. And even in the original series, you know, it was a staff where she got all her powers That's from. where she made her monster grow. Yeah. What she does, and that's what she does in this, yeah. too. Yeah, but, you know, they made it clear that without her scepter, in the, in the TV show, she's worthless. Yeah. She can't do much, so that was fine. Yeah. But in this one, you know, she's she's already super power. She's already a final boss in a video game fight. Yeah. And whether or not she has a scepter doesn't really change much, because once she gets the actual scepter, you know, does she just nothing really changes yeah nothing really changes aside from she's telling everyone because like the point is they're already it. fucking up all the rangers like they don't yeah. even need it like and yeah. that's that's kind of they do address that a little bit in the dialogue where it's like man we've been we've already defeated them like because yeah they show up at the command center and they just beat up all the fucking rangers and like kimberly is the only one kind of holding their own but eventually alpha five just tele or is it billy one of them teleports them all out billy teleports them out because he yeah because he's cloaked in the command center and he's yeah. trying to help get the power Power back on so they can send this distress signal. Yeah. On top of him, he knows. I guess he interfaces with the alien technology, yeah. so he understands the command center. He knows what he's supposed to do. Because his suit is like technically inclined. Yeah, you know, so they definitely play off his smarts. He's a smart yeah. guy. He knows what he's doing. And so, at this point, Jason has shown up with the Zord, and mm-hmm. he's kind of drained from it, so he gets defeated pretty easily. And they're mm-hmm. at the end of their rope, so Billy's just like, "Get him the fuck out of here." Yeah, because as soon as they show up. As soon as they show up with the Zord, Rita it does the whole, you know, ah, make my monster grow yeah. without actually saying it. You know, I just I couldn't read <laughs> I couldn't read that part in the script yeah. without you know thinking in my mind like, uh, you know, in the cartoon it would always be Finster, who was this little troll goblin yeah. thing who would always just make you know makes the monsters out of clay makes the monsters out of clay and then you know he would always come up to her and be like oh they're losing and then she'd just make them grow yeah uh, here they don't do that she kind of just 
God, uses I wish the, they did. She just kind of uses the scepter to make him big, but yeah. Which is Goldar she ends up making big anyway. Yeah, Goldar she makes, which happens all the time in the cartoons. Yeah. You know, every other episode where they don't have a villain. Uh, it's just Goldar. Yeah, like, all right, Goldar. Um, which Goldar is a great fucking villain in the show. Yeah. And he's he's one of the more interesting dominators. The other ones are just kind of there to be there and to get defeated. Um, so at this point, they're all teleported out. And all Kim seems to care about is making out with Billy for some reason. Because it's kind of like, hey, all help's lost. You want to make out? Yeah. Which at is one really point, fucking weird. Yeah. At one point, he's straight up like, you want to make out with me? The world's the world's ending. Yeah. Like, the Pentagon is aware that, like, <laughs> shit is going awry. The military is showing up to Angel Grove. And this girl over here just she's got a fucking wet pussy just <laughs> trying to, like, fuck Billy in the middle of all this. Which was, again, like, Max Landis, like, re- like what? No, yeah. in a situation like that, the last thing you're worried about is getting your jollies off. Yeah. That was one of those things where I was just like, okay, this is clearly Max Landis being Max Landis. Yeah. You know, it's... And I would say that's my biggest problem with the script is when Max Landis is being yeah, Max Landis. you know, there's a lot of moments in the script where it's like, okay, yeah, this would happen. Yeah, that they would say that. Yeah, like I would say for the most part, I enjoyed reading uh, the script. Yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed it. But, but would I have enjoyed his version of Power Rangers? Probably not. Probably not. No, yeah. And yeah, because it's just things like that. He Unnecessary. You know, again, like the world is, they're literally all dying. Yeah. The world is ending. And that's one thing I'll say about the script is like once shit kind of starts going off in the beginning, it doesn't really slow down. It's like... Shit's going bad. They get their coins. There's fighting. They're all separated. They're getting their ass kicked. There's more fighting. Like, it just goes. See, the, the best way I would describe it, and, uh, you know, kind of bring your full circle, talking about the Dark Knight Rises again, it's as if during the final climatic fight, or, yeah, during the final fight, when Batman has to, you know, rush this atomic bomb out of the city, he stops and he's like, hey, Selena Kyle, how about a handy? You yeah. know, like, no, that wouldn't happen. There's all this, like, all this going on and even if there's two people that are romantically interested in each other you know the last thing they last thing they want you know last thing you want is to start fooling around with that person yeah. like you want it's one of those things where they do in every movie where and it even happens here where you know Jason's about to go fight and he kisses Trini and does the whole I love yeah. you you see it in every action movie ever where and this is kind of our regrouping moment where yeah. It's like, oh, man, the world's about to fucking end. But, like, hey, if it's going to end, we're going to go down swinging. Yeah. Which I think, when is it? It's shortly after this that, you know, all hope is lost. And then that's when Jason decides, nope. You know, we're we, going we're we're, gonna to do this. Yeah, we're going to do this. And we're we're going to do it fight. together. Yeah. That's when the whole family comes together. Because at this point, despite all of them having the Ranger coins. They've never even been in the same place together. Yeah, they've never much. been all gathered together. And they have the conversation, you know, like, what do we got to do? And, you it's know, the, like, yeah. It's the Zords. We have yeah, to recall they, the Zords. Yeah, because at this point, uh, they all just get teleported out of the command center i think yeah. i think billy is the billy one is that, still inside yeah billy is still inside he's you know he's hiding he's trying to get the power like up and running and that's when he hears rita say that it's too late that all the other rangers are dead and mm-hmm. they're basically Which it. the one cool part too with zordon was where he was like fucking with her where he was zordon's kind of a dick in the yeah. script like he doesn't look like if you watch the original series like he's like alpha five find me five teenagers with attitude or whatever yeah. and this he's like well you fucking losers are the only ones here and i need somebody to help me yeah and he's like yeah, yeah. you're humans you're not gonna do much good but here you go yeah. And he's really reluctant to give all of them their coins. Yeah. But it, it was kind of funny seeing, you know, Rita's like giving them shit like, yeah, you failed. You know, even those kids got away. Yeah. And he's like, what do you mean they got away? You didn't even kill them? Yeah. Like, and he starts know? like making fun of her. Yeah. And she's like, well, when Zed gets here and he's like, Zed still hasn't like made you a queen. Like what? Yeah. He's like, maybe it's not what you think it is. You idiot. Like yeah. he's basically just trying to fuck with her. Yeah. Just trying to stall for time because yeah, they're, you know, at that point there's not much going on. Yeah. And then this is when the Rangers kind of jump back into action. Jumping. Yeah. And they're kind of fighting the dominators, which lets Jason get inside the Tyrannosaurus Zord and recall the other ones. And honestly, I got pretty hyped reading this moment in the script. It says like verbatim, you know, you hear the music. Yeah. He's like the Zords come and they all hop, get teleported into their Zords. And then they form the mega Zord and the fucking music starts. And honestly, I was like, yeah, let's go. Like, this is when I was, like, enjoying reading the script. Which, it, 
which yeah, which is one of those things where I I understand they won't use the original music. I I think there's going to be a form of it. I've been looking uh-huh. at the soundtrack because I kind of want to check it out and see because they have that cool version of it in the trailer with like the fucking guitar. It's like mm-hmm. down, 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 down. there's like two different songs on the thing labeled Power Rangers theme and one's for like the end credits, one's for in the movie. And I have a feeling it's going it's not going to be the identical song, but it's I think it's going to be like a remix version of it. And I'm yeah, hoping which, it's pretty cool. See, which I'm. <laughs> I'm not really for those remix versions. Like they, I mean, re- you can't use the original fucking totally, 90s totally, guitar you song. Totally could. Like 100. There's. There, I mean, I'd be for it. There's but no I just don't think better it would work for the song. tone. Name me one other I- iconic Power Ranger song. There's. I'm trying to remember. One no, of the fuck other, off. There is no other. No, right? one of the other theme songs is pretty fucking good. I can't remember if it's Lightspeed Rescue or fucking what's that other one? Ah, I can't remember. Well, you. Uh, See, I, I mean, yes, I didn't uh, watch yes, those series, yeah. so they're not memorable uh-huh. to me. Yeah. And I was listening to the theme see, song I, earlier see, today, I, I so watched, I know I it's gr- great. I grew up with them. I watched them religiously up until like. I watched Mighty Morphin and Zeo yeah. and then I was out. I was probably I got probably got up until like the seventh iteration. And then I was like, yeah, that, <laughs> hey, there's girls. And yeah, I want to go outside and play, you know, but. It was like once my favorite character started leaving, then I was out. Yeah. But th- that was the one. So, yeah, I would love for the original music to be in there because what, look at what happened with Ghostbusters when they had like Fall Out Boy or someone. Yeah, like, they had like three the- different versions of the song done by yeah, three yeah. different people and none of like, them were good. There is- and none of them were the cool ass version that was in the trailer because that power or that Ghostbusters song they used in the trailer was really fucking cool. Yeah. And that version was not even on the soundtrack. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I get they won't. I get that they won't use it. I they mean, there's gonna, there's going to be an alternate version. Yeah, there'll I'm be an alternate you. version, but they can totally use it. You know, it, to me, it's like remaking Pokemon and not using that iconic, you <laughs> yeah. know, I want to be the very... You have like, to have like, that, yeah, like even have, just the instrumental of some kind. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, they get the Zords together, and I think it's Zax who shows up last. Yeah, and he's like, oh, what about my Zord? And then his flies, and his is the coolest because it flies. yeah. And the, oh, so this is yeah. So I thought they formed the Megazord immediately, but they don't. They kind of fight the Dominators individually. They fuck up their hovercraft. Zach goes out and blows up the thing in the ocean that uh, is blocking the communications. And now it's fucking Megazord time. Which honestly, this was the most exciting part of the script to me. I love the ending. I love the like battle. So Goldar is the one we said earlier. He gets make my monster grow mm-hmm. goldar is now fucking as tall as a city and he goes in and starts fucking up the city and that's when the fucking megazord comes in and we get our godzilla battle yeah and I, I mean it's as cool as he tried to describe it there i could not get past uh two men in suits fighting you know like in the original <laughs> series just well there's nothing better than that yeah you know where like as corny as that was like watching the reviews for like the later power ranger seasons when they started doing it in cg it's just not the same not the same you know it's it's like hey i i know there's some people who enjoy those earlier kaiju movies you know all the godzilla yeah. ones because it was literally guy in a mothra Which costume they, they did a new one like last year yeah and hey if that's you know, if that's your taste, go for it. You know, like everyone, like there's yeah. certain, like e- like even with us, like for wrestling, you know, there's some people who prefer this style over this style, and you know, it's it's all subjective. You know, one isn't better than the other. Yeah. But I, in my mind, reading the you know Goldar and <laughs> Megazord fight, all I could picture in my mind was two guys in suits fighting <laughs> in a little model town. You know, because. Yeah. That's how it was in the original. Oh, that'd you know, be so awesome. Very That's cl- what they just, did. Just very clunky fighting. It's okay. We ran out of budget, so we just got the old costumes in. Yeah, I mean, it's it was none of those were ever good. None of them. No. were. You know, they were always bad. None of them were ever good. I mean, maybe a little. Oh, there were, there was a was, couple decent ones. Yeah, like I remember in the in the actual the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie. Uh, oh God! So much CG. It's, it's like bad CG too. It's like I mean ne- that movie was like 1995. It was 95. Some, so some, was, yeah. So I mean it's pretty weak. But there yeah. was some decent CG yeah, in 1995. It's like, it's like they they didn't have Matrix CGI no. yet, but they definitely didn't have like bad early 90s yeah, CGI. It was real rough. Yeah. I think there was a story behind that. Like they hired a special effects company that was in trouble and yada yada. 
but it's real. That movie kind of holds up in some aspects, but once the ending starts going on, just shut it off. Yeah. See, the thing with that movie, too, is that the way they, they approach the costumes, it was very much... 90s superhero yeah. oh yeah we can't you know it was very much you can't have them in fucking spandex no Give it was them, like armor yeah and it was, it was cool i yeah. really liked it yeah. um and that's uh, that's kind of i guess what i was picturing as i was reading this script but i guess it's probably going to be something closer to what this movie is that's coming out yeah which is fine because even in even in the that power rangers movie the original one each of the costumes which was kind of reminiscent of this each costume had like Oh, I'm gonna use the special. Oh, they had like uh, one of them had lights and a yeah, scanner and yeah, shit in the like, mask. Oh, let me use my night vision. That These I've, abilities they've never used before. That never used before. I'm never gonna use again. Yeah, it was definitely one of those things. But again, you know, it's you know, it is what it is. Yeah. But you know, eventually, you know, the Zords they wind up saving the you know. Eventually, yeah. it gets that. You know? I I, I want to point out my biggest flaw with the Megazord battle. Which, it's a cool battle. It's them and Goldar, and they're kind of sword fighting. Um, so, we're led to believe that one ranger powering one zord takes a lot of energy out of them. Like, Jason was barely able to do it. And then, Scorpina is on the Megazord, and Zack's like, I'm going to go out there and fight her. So, they're, we're led to believe that they're just hopping around on the Megazord as it's fighting. Yeah. Which is, like, I guess a cool idea in thought, in theory, but in practice seems really stupid. And she ends up getting taken out because they're fighting on the tip of the sword and her like stinger gets caught in the sword as they stab it into Goldar and Zack just kind of jumps off. So she ends up getting killed because of that. Yeah. And there was also the the moment where Jason being the leader, you know, the Red Ranger is always the leader. Yeah. He uh, he's like too physically exhausted. He's all drained. And he tells Trini, like, here. She has like, to take the controls. You, yeah, like, you have to take controls, do it, do it. And she's all. Uh, yeah, the thing is, Rangers keep dropping out of this fucking Zord to go do other things. Yeah, which. And it's like, also, how is one person supposed to fucking pilot this but thing? But also, they said, like, they, they had mentioned something where the Zord can only function with all the Rangers in there. Yeah, and then all I of a sudden think, they're yeah, ducking I think, out. I think Billy fucking leaves. Yeah, it literally becomes. I don't remember what the other two are even doing, but it literally comes down to Jason and Trini, and then Jason almost collapses because he's exhausted and Trini. Trini has to pilot it herself, which is everyone kind of gets their hero moment, and that's hers. Yeah. And it's it's a good moment, but it just doesn't make sense because Jason almost collapsed just piloting the Tyrannosaurus yeah. Zord earlier. Yeah, because like, now he's they, doing the whole Megazord by himself. Yeah, because even now I remember Billy and Kimberly they leave to go to the command center and to yeah. basically save Zordon. Yeah, because you know Rita, she's just she's just fucking him up. They're in there and yeah, she's like just like kind of zapping him basically. Yeah, and she, you know zapping him, just talking her shit, trying to get in, you know, the last few licks that yeah. she can. And that's you know where that's when she and they off, come that's in when to she hold tells, her off. That, yeah, that's when she tells Kimberly like, hey, I used to be the Black Ranger. Yeah, I used to be the Black Ranger. Like I can give you all this. And then that's when <laughs> that's when she's like, I'm the only queen of this planet or yeah, whatever. Which again, like, fuck off. Yeah. Like uh, some you, real rough dialogue. Yeah, where it's like you didn't even live in Angel Grove until yeah. two days ago. You know? Seriously. Like at one point, yeah, at one point she's like on a cliff getting drunk in her car. Yeah, with Bulk and Skull. With Bulk and Skull, and I'm like, what are you what, what? <laughs> like what? Yeah, like that's I don't know. That, yeah, that's before because that's the moment before she kind of goes into the city when everything's getting fucked up. Yeah, yeah, that was a, such a she's they yeah. just depict her as such a weird character. Yeah, but then and, and I felt the ending to everything with two was kind of like anticlimactic. Yeah, so I mean they defeat Goldar and then for uh, no reason at all rip the roof off the command center. Which hey, thanks asshole. That's only our base. Yeah, and then they like. Put the Zord to Rita. Yeah. And she's like, no. She just has, to, she gets teleported out yeah. by Squat and Babu, I believe. Yeah, by Babu. At some point during the fight, they fuck off. And yeah, and they're on the moon. And yeah. now we got Rita's moon base. Yeah. And she's just kind of like, no, on the moon. Yeah, you know, she does her, her best. Starth Vader, no. Yeah. But, you know, that's kind of just the end of that. And then. Then we get our Rangers mm -hmm. camping out somewhere. But see, well, no, the, so the good, the one thing I did like before that was. The Rangers are all, we won, we won. And yeah. Zordon is like, mm, yeah, you, you kind of won. Yeah, he's like, yeah, well, you know. He's a real dick in the yeah, script, he's like, I gotta say. Yeah, he's, he, you know, he's It's real, like tough love. Yeah, he's like, well, no, they'll, they'll be back. Yeah. But for now. He's like, you did better than I thought you would, so pat on the back there. Yeah, which is, oh, all right. Hey, you know, yeah, they, they, they got some progress. Yeah. 
But yeah, I mean, then right after that, it's one of those things where, you know, Trini's and they like they get they're at like a yeah. barbecue. They're on like some at a barbecue lake or and whatever. Trini. She like transport from Harvard. That's one. Yeah, thing. yeah. She's like at Harvard. Uh, this is where Zach jokes about switching coins with Billy. Yeah. And Zach has oh. also told his girlfriend that yeah. he's a Power Ranger. Yeah, that part's where I'm like, dude, you're 17. Yeah. Like, this is a girl, you're not going to be with this girl forever, probably. Yeah, because... Most 17-year-olds don't stay together. Yeah. Like, I... Even in... And, like, her name is, like, Angela or something. Yeah. And, and I thinking, think she was a character in the original show. Well, she, but yeah, again, it's like a... It's a thing they try to put in the show that ends up really going nowhere. Yeah, because that's what I was trying to think of, like... Mm, is she some, but no there's you know the only other the only name drop of significance is tommy oliver yeah. and that's because in this you know he becomes a green ranger and then eventually becomes which is still a fucking great five White episode ranger. story arc yeah, of that show yeah it's great you know so we get the happy ending yeah and then and then it's like oops we got a call we all gotta teleport out of here yeah, they're like yeah rita's in like japan or something yeah and they're like, well, we better go. You yeah, know. and they teleport and leave Zach's girlfriend there. Yeah. And she's like, oh, guys, like hands on her shoulders. Yeah. Mm. And that, that's kind of your heroic ending. And yeah, I yeah. don't know. Cue the cue yeah. Power Ranger music. but Kid friendly, I guess. Yeah. Well, what, what was interesting was the uh, post credit scene. Yeah, which we would assume would be a we post credit scene. Yeah, it's kind of just tagged on yeah, at the end there. Which uh, that's when we're introduced to Finster, who again little goblin yeah. who just makes the zords you know he they're like on a spaceship uh like somewhere in the fucking galaxy and he's like um hey uh zed yeah we got a problem fucking he, lord zed yeah and he's like what like what is it well yeah. he's like um we got power rangers yeah and he's like what and he's like Power, Power Rita, Rangers? Power Rangers and Rita, she's failed. Yeah, you know? To which, I mean, when they describe him, they describe him as... Exactly how he is in the yeah, show. Because Zed is already so fucking awesome, you don't yeah. need to change yeah, it. Yeah, like... Ugh. Like, I... I am, I'm assuming that there there's at least going to be mention of Zed in this movie. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping we see him. I don't think we will. Maybe yeah. we'll see something. It'll probably be, honestly, it'll probably be like at the end of Avengers where you see Thanos. Yeah. Like just kind of. That's all I need. There. Give me that much of Zed. Like that exact same scene because yeah. this sounds almost like that scene where the yeah. one, you know, where at the end of Avengers, the alien comes up to him and he's like. Uh, and he just like turns his head. He's you like, see we his failed, face. you know, and he turns around. They can totally do that. But it sounds a little closer to the end of Age of Ultron where he grabs the gauntlet and he's like, I guess I'll do this myself yeah. because Zed holds up the power coin for the Green Ranger. And or like the end of Civil War. There, it's nothing like Civil War. I just wanted to bring <laughs> it up. It's a great fucking movie. It's so good. It's so good. Um, but so but yeah, you know, we get our tease so, for a sequel yeah, and a Green Ranger. That is basically like, yeah, I got to do this myself. Yeah. And they, they say, you know, you see him with the green coin, which if all indication you is you know, the second movie, they'll introduce Tommy Oliver you as the have Green to. Ranger. Yeah, which that, you know, that's a movie in and in it of itself because by then, you know, you could have the team established. You know, they, and you got to imagine that's what the second movie would would have been would be the whole arc of the Green Ranger of him be, by the end of the movie he'd become good and then they would fight Zed together. Yeah, which you know you could totally do, or you can even you can even save Zed for the third movie. You know, yeah, you can yeah just have them fight the Green Ranger. It's totally you know this it, it actually comes back to Captain America Civil War. <laughs> He's always trying to create yeah, it. Yeah, you know they're you know they got to fight Bucky at first and then yeah. they realize no Bucky isn't the enemy. You know, and that's essentially what happens to Tommy at first. Yes, he is the enemy, but that's because he's being brainwashed. Yeah. Much like the Winter Soldier, you know, <laughs> in Captain America Civil War. But, you know, if if anything, it, it definitely left it open for, hey, yeah. if we do a sequel, which they'll do. Any, any movie like this is yes. being billed as a franchise. I'm sure this movie, which we are, I guess there was a news thing that there is a post credit scene or yes. like a mid credit scene for this yeah. new movie. But I also heard that that's where the cameos for the original Rangers might be. So I don't know if that's for a sequel or, oh, here's just a fun cameo scene just to give them their due diligence, mm-hmm. you know. But I, there's has, they're, they're already talking about doing six or seven of them. So yeah, you know, there has to be some sort of sequel yeah, hint in there yeah, somewhere. Even if, even if this one isn't that good, they'll do a second one. If the second one is really that bad, then they just won't do another one, you know. Yeah, like, I have a hard time. I mean... 
I'm really interested to see how much of this script made it into that movie because Max Landis is not listed as a writer on this yeah, movie. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's straight up said like, no, you know, he's like they. It it just happens, you know. They this happens all the time. Yeah, where and hey, then, we like this script, but we're gonna change this, this, yeah, and that. They pay for a script and then they take it, then they hire a new writer, they give them that script, and they're like, write us a new version based off this. And it seems like some elements have made it. Rita was a former ranger. Jason's a fuck up. A couple other minor things, like maybe some of that stuff transferred over. I don't see any major plot points coming over. And honestly, I kind of hope they don't. Because yeah. everything I've seen from that movie so far it looks a lot better than what we read. Yeah, which again, not to say this is a bad script. I would definitely No, check I it definitely out. enjoyed it, it and I would fun, recommend it. It was a fun and a quick read, you know. I it, it really moves. Yeah, I got like three fourths of the way through it before I realized like, like, Oh shit. I'm like really far. Yeah, I was like, I have 20 pages left. Like, yeah. Oh, cause I, I've definitely read some scripts for this podcast that I've enjoyed so far. I've enjoyed every script that I've done. And I might sound like I'm shit talking the script, but I had fun reading it. I'm reading it. I got so hyped for this new movie. I started looking for the soundtrack to buy it and it doesn't mm-hmm. even come out until the day the movie comes out. Yeah. And I'm like, I kind of want to go back. It's like reinvigorated my love for power Rangers. Yeah. And, which I, from time to time, like I, I, I want to rewatch them. But yeah, they're all the on o- Netflix. Every series. Yeah. Honest to me, the only to- tolerable series is uh, what is it, Galaxy or Lost in Space? One of the, one of the in ones. Space. In Space, Lost Galaxy was afterwards yeah. not as good. So in Space, but just because like they're it's pretty fucking dark. Like, yeah, they, you should really watch those reviews I t- uh-huh. I sent you because. It, it made me want to go back. There's three different series I want to go back and watch, and mm-hmm. In Space is one of them, yeah. and then a couple I mean, of the later yeah, so ones. I mean, they, they do, you know, it's just a little bit. The thing, too, is I I love when universes interconnect. You know, if yeah. I'm watching a superhero movie and they casually, or it not even has to be a superhero movie, you know, if I'm watching a movie and they reference another movie in that same universe, yeah. you know, where... Even in fucking Batman Forever when they name drop Metropolis, you know? Yeah, or, you know, it's like in... Uh, in clerks too and they say you know at julie dwyer's funeral yeah. and i'm just like oh that's the funeral you know yeah it's just when they do that when it's all it's when it's all connected i love that and yeah. that's what they did with that series and that's what i'm hoping they do with this movie because there is so much more room to you know okay we did mighty Morphin, which i i would love to see if they like by the third movie it's like are they gonna do zeo are they gonna like brandish out that far yeah which you totally you know and the one thing too that they can do is kill a ranger. Well, you see, yeah, like I don't. <laughs> by the time this comes out, I've all I will have already seen this movie because I'm crazy and I go watch these. Yeah, I usually go like the Thursday happen. night. Yeah, like I went to go see Rogue One at like one because I <laughs> didn't get out of work wait. in time at twelve, and it was if it was it was midnight, a one a.m. and a four a.m. show, and Frank, uh, shout out to Frank, our our boss, our boss. Uh, yeah, he was like, you're fucking insane if you think you're going to go to a 4 a.m. show and make it back to work at 9 o'clock. And I was like... Watch me. I was like, yeah, I'll fucking do it. <laughs> and then he let me out of here early so I could not do that. You yeah. Know? Because, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely going to go yeah. see the new so, one in theaters. So um, the one thing I did read that a lot of people are saying that's supposed to happen is cameos and a ranger dies. Which I just, would love to see them go yeah, there because yeah. that's one thing those these superhero movies are not really doing. I mean, that's one thing DC did over Marvel. They fucking killed Superman. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, they a hundred percent kill him, yeah. but they went there. Yeah, they took it. You know, which I, if they kill a Ranger in the first movie, hey, that's great. I I feel like maybe second movie. You know, not yeah. At least not first. Because yeah, you don't have to. I don't think you should in the first. I think you should in the second. Yeah, because it's like, I don't care about any of these fucking kids. Yeah. You know, at least, like, if... I, I think this movie will be good. I'm I, hoping. I, I don't expect to come out of it weeping and sobbing. No, no, no. Like I did after Logan, you know, <laughs> <laughs> both times. But I, I definitely expect it to be a good movie. And yeah. if... I'm if definitely going to be going yeah. into it now with different eyes to see, oh, what from this script made yeah. it into the movie. And that's the thing, too, where it's like, if they like this cast, then, hey... The, the Zeo Rangers are this group of people. Yeah. And the Turbo Rangers are I, this group uh, of people. I hope they don't go know? to Turbo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Turbo features them getting baked into a pizza. Yeah, that movie or that show was real rough. The movie was fine. I didn't see the movie. The, the movie's fine. It's more definitely more tolerable than 
uh, the Mighty Morphin Ranger movie. Yeah, I would like to watch it. Un- yeah, like until the ending, where I'm just like, mm. there's like forced cameos in there. I'm yeah, like, um, it's cool to see you know, Jason and Kimberly, but it was ba- it, it kind of felt just like Jordex a little weak. What can we do? Yeah. Well, these guys aren't doing anything. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed talking about it with you. Yeah, it was definitely it was, it was a fun read, and yeah, same thing. I'm definitely yeah. more pumped to see the actual movie now. Yeah. Um, like, I'm glad it's not going to be this, but it's nice to have that little bit of backstory. Yeah. And, like, it'll be fun to look out for this stuff while we watch the movie. Yeah, no, for sure. That's one of the things where... And I'm, I don't expect it to fully be this. Like, I'll be pissed off if I go watch the movie. And, and it's I, this script. And it's this script, and I just read it on. I'm like, well, fuck, there goes... Yeah, uh, no, you know? I, I think we'll see 1% of this script in that movie. That's what yeah. I'm throwing down Which, right hey, now. I mean, even if it's half of what happens in here, it's fine half of the script is good yeah just don't don't when you don't have kim really confess how wet she is for billy <laughs> as they're about to die yeah it was like come come on you know but i mean yeah. from the movie from the movie itself you can see that they keep you know kim really and jason are the yeah. ones who are like are attracted and to each the other the trailers have all been impressive so far yeah listen you put uh power by kanye west under any <laughs> trailer and i'm in such a good trailer yeah it, it, listen it could yeah it could be some like medieval you know politics movie you put fucking power back on your west underneath it and i'll be like you know what it's pretty fucking great yeah i'm like it, same thing with gimme shelter by the rolling stones you attach it to <laughs> a, like any trailer and i'm like oh, this movie is gonna be the best yeah God, i was so surprised when that other trailer came out yeah but yeah so i you know Go read the script. You can find Absolutely. it online. I couldn't. It's pretty easy to find. Yeah. I found it without even trying. <laughs> yeah, I typed in Max Landis, and probably a third, fourth thing was Power Ranger script. Yeah, you know, he himself has like linked it. So again, not hard to find. No, if you're a Power Rangers fan at all, if you're interested in this new movie at all, highly recommend you read it. Yeah, and by the time this comes out, you know, I, I will have already seen it. And I'm I sure, hope to see it and have like a yeah, review pretty yeah. shortly. I'm sure Jeremy on his uh, mini pod for the, you know, the episode after will either tell you how great this movie was <laughs> or how disappointing, or how disappointing it was. was either based on him seeing it or my review. Yeah. But regardless, go watch it. Yeah. Let's yeah. all go see it together. Yeah. Let's all go see it together. <laughs> yeah. our, our boss usually takes us to go watch movies. I'm but, trying to convince him for this one because yeah. he's like, I don't really want to see it in theaters, but I'm like, I'm thinking that might be the way to get us all to go see it. Yeah. And listen, one way or another, we're all going to go see this movie. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. All right. Well, thanks for sitting with me. Is there yeah, anything no you want to plug your Twitter or anything? Like um, that? Yeah. I mean, you can go. It's uh, scrump underscore one S C R U M P underscore one. That's, a lot of just me talking about Yokelis, my nephew, and <laughs> it's wrestling. worth following. Just yeah, for that. and wrestling. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at cm underscore scrump. Um, aside from that, leave Jeremy a positive review. Give Please. him five stars. Uh, leave and, any review. Yeah, leave we it. read them on the show. Yeah, leave any review, even if it's like I'll read shitty reviews. I have yeah, already done read, it once. He's read bad reviews. You know, I've already done it, and I am not afraid. Because hey, I need the I need the constructive criticism. Yeah, so go download it. Um, aside from that, not much. All right. Yeah. Yeah, and like he said, be sure to review the show. And, of course, you can always follow us on Twitter at Shelved Podcast and email the show at shelvedfilmpodcast at gmail.com. Let me know how I'm good I'm doing. Talk some shit to me. Let's fucking talk about a movie we talked about. I'll read anything. I don't even care. It's <laughs> anything, fun. I, like I love interacting with everybody who's been listening on Twitter. And get, send me an email. It'll 100% get read on the show. I'm going to totally make a fake email account. I'd email you now. You can just use your real email account. I'll still read it. Yeah, but it's more fun if you're like, yeah, it's some weird girl from Switzerland who's <laughs> asking me. Uh, to keep, but your to keep, name was in like the subject line. It was really confusing. Like, yeah, they keep talking about uh, never mention Kimberly getting wet for Billy on a podcast <laughs> again. Yeah, and it's just they just keep talking about Rick and Morty. It's real weird. Yeah, Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty season three, too. Look out for that. Wait. I have nothing to do with it. Just look out for it. Yeah, that. everybody should be looking out for that. Yeah. All right, man. All right, Jeremy. Thanks for sitting with me. No problem. And let's go see Power Rangers. Dun, dun, dun. That's not even how it goes, is it? <laughs> I don't think so.